my story starts um, with the loving and sang, sang for orangutans. It starts at a very young age. Actually, I remember in year six, uh, when I was going to British International School of Jakarta, um, we were learning about deforestation and the impact, and just learning everything about deforestation, actually. And my best friends, Nili Pronomo and Klaus Wopsik, uh, they are both major animal activists and being close to them when I first moved to Indonesia. So yeah, I got the chance to work with them closely. Being an animal activist, I was able to, on many different foundations and I guess charity events, be able to help out and uh, get, get more active in towards it. Number one is educating people, right? But I think people don't realize is orangutans, if we don't save orangutans, we won't save us. Orangutans are, uh, again, tree, uh, the biggest, largest tree-dwelling um, apes in the forest. And their fruit um, eating and seed dispersing behavior is actually a natural, significant ecological uh, system that makes uh, you know, a whole ecosystem kind of grow in some ways. And if you take that out of the chain, eventually the whole food chain breaks down. So with not having, not having orangutans actually, or not protecting them and not protecting their home, which is the wild, the rainforest, um, we also ultimately kill off the other species that help them as well. So orangutans are the main uh, chain to actually help the rest of other species in the rainforest. Secondly, if we take that away, ultimately we lose out because in, in a way, as humans, we need the rainforest. We need, uh, we need oxygen, we need, uh, we need that land to eventually also farm sustainably ourselves. And by chopping up their homes or taking away their homes, it's going to be inefficient in the future if we do anything with the land. Well, the major issue with this is probably, yeah, the, lo they're losing their habitat, which is um, we're taking away their home uh, through uh, commercial farming, unsustainable farming. To be honest, since 1950s, 60% uh, of orangutans um, are now uh, rapidly declining. I'm not going to say who, what type of farming that is, but generally we're, we're building, un usually at the moment we're building a lot of unsustainable farming, which is affecting um, yeah, which is obviously going to affect not just the orangutans itself, but us. If you have unsustainable farming, um, you know, once the soil is used or you, you, um, you know, ruin the soil, you can't grow or can't use it. So it ends up being, you know, dead land. Boston well, Foundation actually works closely with the government because, uh, especially the forestry department, Boss Foundation 2012 uh, started the release program. Um, so since five years from now, um, we've successfully released uh, 350, around 350 orangutans, with 600 still on the waiting list to be released. And um, I've had luck enough to uh, work with Bluebird Group um, to release uh, Haley and two, three others and hopefully going to be releasing more. And an orphan orangutan is taken, especially usually at a, young, at a young age. It takes about seven to eight years for their rehabilitation, for them to learn the skills to be eventually uh, independent and be put back into the wild. So it's actually a long process. There's still a monitoring process that takes up a few months to know that they will survive in the wild before um, they can actually let them live the, the life they're supposed to live. And my experience was uh, haley has been in um, uh, the sanctuary for about seven years. Um, she was about, if I'm correct, about seven to six years old, if I remember her age. And um, she was also an orphan, orphan uh, orangutan. And uh, now she's in the monitor to make sure she can, she can adapt with her new home, hopefully successfully. Um, actually doing the long journey into the jungle, which wasn't easy, you know, which could constitute of like an eight hour drive uh, through muddy roads, up hills, and then eventually um, you know, crossing river crossings, right into um, in central Kalimantan. Uh, we finally released them after, a, I think it was like a 15 hour journey. And then we finally released them to their home, with their natural home, where they should be. And the moment of letting the cage go and letting her climb up. Um, I remember clearly she, she actually, um, we have to be a bit sensitive when we let them go because they're quite aggravated after that long period of, 
you know, and they really, you can see them shaking. So when I lifted up the cage and she quickly ran up to the tree about two minutes, she quickly turned around and looked at me. And at that point, um, I was a little bit scared and shocked because you never know what's gonna happen. So at that point, I just looked, watched, kept calm, and she kind of looked at everyone, you know, wondering what was going on, but knew that she was out. So at that point, she eventually went up the tree and I got to step back and, you know, embrace her being free for once. They are disappearing. They're disappearing fast because, like I said before, um, they're losing their home from commercial farming. The more and more we cut down the rainforest and make way for uh, commercial farming, uh, the more and more we lose, you know, something that we actually ultimately need, uh, which is the rainforest, a natural rainforest. They can help contribute uh, with funding. Uh, release even because release costs around four thousand US dollars logistically to release one orangutan. So um, anything can help funding-wise, um, not just release, but uh, it will go towards the Boss Foundation. And um, we have hundreds of orangutans, so there's many other reasons for us to help fund, um, so we can find them, give them a home, or find a home for them, or create a home for them. Uh, maybe it be an artificial island or whatnot. Besides funding, you can also uh, help by always being aware of um, certain products you use uh, that are more uh, mainly on the commercial farming and you know if you use less of those products um, you know obviously you're not contributing to these big companies that are actually you know so at the moment I'm taking a bit of a break um, uh, this year I do have a couple of projects a couple of documentary projects um, on conservation as well, so I look forward to making a few of my own um, productions with my team. Um, besides that, I'm going to take a bit of a break and focus on um, an injury that I need to get fixed up. Hi guys, I'm Richard Kyle. Um, please help support Boss Foundation, Borneo Orangutan Survival Foundation. Uh, you can please check out www.orangutan.org.id.